Hey guys, Spartan here, welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duels of the Roses part whatever. Uh, this is the second side, and doing so I'm going to of course create a new file so I don't just carry over all my powerful cards. And I'm going to name this file Leper. Why? Because comments recommended it, and why not? So, the reason why the name is kind of important is because it determines what type of deck you got. I think I said this in episode 1, but just in case you've forgotten, uh, I was not guaranteed to even get Maiden of the Aqua, so that's why I kind of had to improvise half my run. Because I uh, didn't do practice with that. And some of the deck leaders are more rare than others. I think the rarest one is Robotic Knight. But Robotic Knight is just not even really that good in particular. I may try and use a more uh, interesting deck on this run. So I'm going to skip a bunch of the dialogue as soon as I've actually picked the cards, just so I can get to the uh, cho side choosing part. But let's see what we are offered. Come on, just show me the cards. Maiden of the Aqua. No, I'm not going to do Maiden of the Aqua again. Okay, so the Illusory Gentleman and Wolf Axe Wielder. Um, you can see that Wolf Axe Wielder is, of course, Beast Warriors, Beasts, and Warriors. There's a lot of Aqua, apparently, but... Yep. And uh, the Illusory Gentleman is Spellcasters, Zombies, Fiends, and then some Aqua. Like, I don't know why Aqua is so popular. It isn't even really a good typing. But yeah, I'm going to choose the Illusory Gentleman because, um, just... Wolf Axe Wielder is not interesting, like, at all. His deck kind of sucks. Okay, so now I'm going to skip to the side selection part. Okay, now it's time to choose, and since we chose red last time, we're of course, of course going to go with white, which is the, uh, it's the top option, but it's not the default option, so yep. A wise choice. Good. Welcome to the Rose Crusaders. Okay, old man, it's time to make yourself scarce. And he makes this face, which isn't really a face, it's just his bulging eyes. What are you doing? Stop! No! And he disappears and is never seen from again. He is not an opponent you can face, he's just... some guy. Not going to hurt you. Well, of course you wouldn't, because you kind of need me. Blah, blah, blah. This is... All he says now is basically... Yeah, you need to go to France. Or something like that. And he's then explaining... Um... Which does not get explained in the Red Roses, I believe, that you need to have a lower deck cost than your opponent. This is important, because one of the opponents you have to face has like 757 deck cost, which is the lowest out of anyone. It's fucking Bakura, by the way. And that deck is really annoying to face, because their deck leader is just so, so powerful. So yeah, I actually don't even remember what the Illusory Gentleman carries in his deck, but yep, let's go see. Let's dive into it ourselves. First opponent is Taya. It's not T. Dare to betray the hopes of Prince Yubi? Y Yugi? I'll teach you the error of your ways. Well, go ahead and try. This music is actually pretty good. I prefer this over the uh, other side. It's more classical. So, Illusory Gentleman, his deck is not that great. But, unlike uh, Maiden of the Aqua, it is chock full of um, fusions. Example, uh, let me fuse these two together to make uh, Queen of Autumn Leaves. Just because Plant and Female makes Queen of Autumn Leaves. Pretty good, actually. 1900, I mean, not 1900. 1800 for just a straight up decent monster. Eh, it's not bad. Now, Taya's deck is actually fairly competent. As in, if you let her just buff up her minions a lot, she can easily win. Also, Enchanted Javelin. This is a Sword of Dragon Souls, except it makes uh, fairies destroy fiends, so. It's, whatever that monster is, is not destroying, uh, Queen of Autumn Leaves. So let me go over the cards, uh, Unhappy Maiden is just some garbage that also takes no battle damage. It's kind of better than, uh, Psychic Capital, because it costs less, but then again, that isn't really a selling point. I believe you can fuse Aqua with Female. No, okay, who cares then. Uh, also... Rogue Doll is actually really good in this game if you are choosing the other side because it instantly destroys zombies. Which means you can run uh, Rogue Doll against Bones and Bones will just... Like, destroy all of his monsters because he doesn't know how the effect works. <laughs> it's funny actually, I should probably find footage of that later. Also, we're going to see a bunch more card animations. First being uh, Radiant Temperature and Queen of Autumn Leaves. 
One thing I'd like to say about this campaign, it's significantly harder than the other, so I'll have to do some grinding much faster than uh, the other file. The other file I at least had to wait until Pegasus. Is it just me or does this look choppy as all hell? It's all the motion blur. So Radiant Temperature's effect is that it is kind of like Jirai Gumo, it negates opponent's buffs and debuffs. That's enough uh, flashes from you. <laughs> what a weird card. So, uh, in between last episode and this episode, I did some looking up on the wiki to f look up actually what cards there were in the game, because, uh, I just straight up looked and see if I've actually missed any cards that I could potentially talk about, and, um, one of the cards I could have talked about is, um, what's it called? Uh, this weird ritual to summon some weird 2050 attack fiend monster, which required Mysterious Puppeteer and two machines, and its effect was if your deck master is Mysterious Puppeteer, then it gains a 1,500 attack and defense, which is like, what? What kind of effect is that? I may have to try and get that card. Like, it requires you obtaining a ritual, which those things are impossible to get from reincarnating, pretty much. But yep, yeah, I'll try and get that in a bonus episode and show that off. Also, Skelgon or Skelangel. No, not Skelgon, Skelangel has an effect very similar to its normal game effect, where in the original game it just it's a flip, draw one card, but if it dies on your turn, then you get a um, Solomon's Law Book effect, which is effectively, you know, playing on the card. And draw, technically, so it still does draw. Come on, attack the amoeba. Well, you kind of suck. Um, I have almost lethal here, because I have Yami. Which is, of course, the dark terrain effect. Also, fairies lose power in dark, so I'm um, pretty sure there's no coming back from this. One thing to take heed of is that um, she does have Tears of the Mermaid. It's her only trap. But you kind of do need to take a bit of caution against it. I mean, I could have moved here, here. So there was no way she could run away, but this card right here could be Tears of the Mermaid. In fact, I'm going to check. No, nope, it wasn't. Okay, so I just wasted my time. Eh, a worthy gamble. By the way, she really likes to fusion. She fuses for Dark Witch constantly. Which is like her one fusion. It has 1,850 attack. But, yep, it's not really that good. I mean, it's a formidable foe for a uh, mountain. It's on par with Queen of Autumn Leaves. Wing Egg Elf, really? I wasted my time on this. Do not need to see Amoeba's attack animation, because we've already seen it get a kill in the last episode, because I just felt like memeing it up. Okay, what's this thing? Uh, whatever it is, there's a very, very low chance that it's actually able to kill Ancient Elf. Oh, I forgot those two mix. What do they make? Marine Beast. Well, what a piece of garbage that is. Potion Engine, wow. Uh, that boosts the power of all... F is it all fairies or all light monsters? By 300, which really isn't enough to kill Ancient Elf. Ancient Elf is a female, by the way. It can be hard to tell from the card artwork. But, yep. Keep in mind, it works for fusions. Fun fact, there are two spells in this game that uh, only power up female monsters, and that's Cyber Shield and Electro Whip. So, BDSM gear for the harpy ladies in the anime. <laughs> but yep, uh, they're not really that good unless you're running all female, but since female isn't a main archetype, why would you? Unless you're doing like a gimmick deck. I can probably fit two duels in this episode, seeing as I didn't have to go through the entirety of the intro. I don't have a whole heap of time here, but I just feel like recording now. 
I have a new chair today because uh, yesterday was Christmas. But yep, it's really comfortable. It's not like my old one, which was literally decaying. I could put a picture up here, but I probably won't. Also, the slot machines work a bit differently because there's a little difference in the side. Like that one, that one had like crazy slide. Also, fake trap already. Beautiful. That's how fast that duel went. So, the only upside to this path is that Taya and the next duelist, who I will leave anonymous for now, are piss easy. I guess I lost. Pains me to know that I lacked the strength to protect my lord. And love. Oh, no one cares about you, Taya. You're, you're not a love interest. Actually, you are, technically, but you're pretty much just plot explanation in the anime. Also, the pegs to uh, the different zones are green instead of red. Yep, Tristan. Notice his deck cost. It's, like, higher than Pegasus's, almost. The other one they call the Duelist, right? If you want to go any further, you'll have to face me and my Crab Walker strategy. Tristan is the easiest opponent in the game. Not even joking, his 11.49 debt cost is... it's nothing. Because Tristan, um, look at his field. In case you haven't noticed, um, these two are really easy because they don't really have fields that benefit them. I mean, what kind of deck benefits from all of this random garbage? Also, his deck leader is Carbonal Warrior, which has no leader ability despite being a LTC, which is Lieutenant Colonel or something like that. But yeah, um... You have plenty of fiends to fight on your own place. Also, fucking... What are these cards? Beat Snake? We're probably just gonna go with Spirit of the Winds next turn. At least then I can play something that doesn't die immediately. Really? Well, um... So, the AI likes to play a card every turn, so that means that the AI has only level 5 or higher monsters in their hand. Um, Karibo doesn't fuse with Spirit of the Winds, does it? This deck has a lot of females, for some reason. I mean, maybe it's worth actually running things. Also, you can see if they're female, because Electro Whip, Cyber Shield, and Malevolent Nuzzle will show up as, uh, boosts. So, yep. That's how you can check. Of course, uh, gender ambiguous cards are obviously not treated as females. There are no exceptions to this rule. Um, Green Phantom King. I believe I can mix Spellcaster and Lord of the Lamp to make uh, La Jin. Also, Spirit of the Mountain is like one of the worst minions, I mean, monsters in the game. It, it doesn't even have good stats or anything. Uh, I got Plant, I got Dragon. I don't think that uh, Green Phantom King is strong enough to make Black Dragon Jungle King. You know what, let's uh, try this out. Nope. Whatever. Lord of the Lamp, kill whatever that is. It's a deep sea shark. So, Tristan has a bunch of really, like, relatively powerful monsters, so he is, like, the optimal enemy to grind against. Out for pretty much any deck, because he has a bit of everything. The problem is that he doesn't have any synergy, like, ever. He has cards like Fairy Meteor Crush, which destroys cards in 10 random spaces on the map. Usually, it does nothing because it's 10 random spaces, not 10 random spaces that have cards in them. So, uh, yeah. Waste of time. Also, here's the rare occurrence when two monsters with the same attack points battle. The one that attacked first dies. And then the camera pans over. And the second monster has died. Mutually assured destruction. But yeah, uh, Deep Sea Shark, in order to get to water, it has to go through Wasteland, which it'll only have a 1,400 attack in, so, uh, it's pretty pathetic. Also, I'm banging my arms against the, uh, armrests of this chair, because I have to lift them up in order to actually... Actually, I don't have to lift them up, I choose to. Really? You're... What are you doing? Um, okay. Well, I guess I'm going to bait this enemy into attacking my face. I'm gonna smash them in the face with Spirit of the Winds. It's a spellcaster, so I'll be able to attack him no matter where he moves, due to the movement boost. And uh, next turn I'll ram uh, Black Dragon Jungle King and just kill him. Beautiful Beast Tamer, that increases the power of all beasts. 
you control, not on the field, I believe, by 300 when flipped. Not really that good. Okay. This deck does have a lot of females. What the hell? This is the illusory gentleman, it's a male. I am confused. Okay, so, um, no, that doesn't work. Does this make Black Dragon Jungle Queen? By all rights, it should. Because Queen of Autumn Leaves is power level. Nope. Scratch that. Hey, Komori Dragon, you're gonna get a kill. You've been, like, in every single deck I've made since the beginning. Because you were a base card in the Maiden of the Aqua deck, and you're a base card in this deck. My god, it looks fat. He's thick. Also, I believe Komori, Komori just means, like, dark or something, so it's quite literally dark dragon. Rest in peace, beautiful beast trainer. You were not beautiful enough to uh, sway the dragon. Probably because of the mesmeric control uh, that just hypnotized you and just pissing it off or something. So yeah, you can see Tristan has a bunch of high cost cards in his deck. He's played two expensive cards already. I mean, Beautiful Beast Trainer I actually got on my other file because I reincarnated something expensive and got it. And this is not lethal, it is off by 50 points, which I'm actually kind of glad on. I want more cards in the graveyard. I just want to get some junk. Tristan has some powerful stuff and I need it. He has Creature Swap in his deck, by the way, which, um... Actually really sucks, unless you are very uh, much committing to the uh, Creature Swap OTK trick. Um, I have Lethal, but I want to see what this is. It's Visego the Destro- no, it's Garuzis. Well then, that's surprising. You know what, it isn't really surprising that he's playing a monster that actually has some ability to kill something. But yeah, Tristan has a bunch of the card called Vasego the Destroyer, which he uses in a ritual to summon Chakra, of all things. Chakra, of course, being a uh, 2450 attack ritual monster that actually has a decent effect. It revives itself in its summoning area when it dies by battle, which will be happening a lot because it doesn't have enough attack to protect itself from anything. It dies to Dark Magician and Skull Knight, despite the fact that it's a ritual monster. Holy mother of frames, Garuzis. Well, yeah, Garuzis kind of sucks because Beast Warriors suck in this game. That's pretty much the only reason why. I still have Lethal, don't I? No, these are both Waters. Well, shit. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this bird here. Yeah, whatever. Do your worst. I probably have, like, a burn spell in my deck somewhere with how janky this deck is already. God, Tristan, do you only have level 5 monsters? I have the 13th grave. What happened to all the other graves? You know what? Swag kill. I'm gonna kill Garuzis. With Dragon Zombie. Also, I'd like to point out that Skeleton is also a uh, sub-archetype, just like female. Dragon Zombie can fuse into Skelgon with, um, whatchamacallit, a skeleton type monster. Which means, guess what? Freaking Skull Servant Meta. Skull Servant is actually a really bad card in this game. Just because it's a 300, actually it's effectively a 600, 500 for a 11 deck cost. No, it's not. It's a 600-500 for 10 debt cost, which means technically you get more bang for your buck, but it's... F like, it's really fusion material only. It's not even good in crush. Dragon Zombie is also pretty much uh, the most min-maxed monster you can get in terms of uh, attack to debt cost. 1600 zero defense is just 16 debt cost for a 1600 beta. It's pretty good. It's really nice. I don't know where this deck is going to go. Maybe I'll wait until my first actual, like, triple slot machine card. Let's see. Can I get... Um, I actually just want that shark. Nice. Got the shark. 
I can't really fuse anything with it, it's just relatively powerful. And Carbon La Warrior, which has no use. Carbon La Warrior is a card that is exactly the same as Kodrakoki. And that's it. I don't believe it, you beat the crab out of me! Your deck really sucks, Tristan. You need some synergy, you need some sp you need some traps. You have none of them. You need a bunch of stuff, like... Not Mystery Hand. Okay, so the next opponent is my. I'm gonna go for a quick thumb through my deck right now. To see if there's any possible way I could actually beat my. If not, I need to grind. So the most expensive card in my deck is Illusionist Faceless Mage, followed by Magic Jammer, Crow Goblin, Musician King, Spirit of the Wind, Spirit of the Mountain, Rogue Doll, Yami, Dome of the Angel of Silence, a fairy type monster. Rare Fish, Magical Ghost, yeah, I have a bunch of garbage in this deck. It's, um... Oh look, it's Unizombie, except it's Unizombie, but it's literally the old version of Unizombie that has no effect. I mean, look at him. Look at him, compare him to Unizombie. It's the exact same card. But yeah, I have a... Ancient Brain, really. I literally have no way of beating my because my deck is just too weak right now. Wow, you know, Tama, 100 damage for 5 deck cost, OP, OP. So yeah, I'm actually gonna have to grind against, like, um... Probably just do it against Tristan. I'll do, like, three games against Tristan, then reincarnate, and then I should be able to beat my, but... Until then, I will see you guys in the next video, where we will be taking on my, Because my is cheap. And she has a field entirely of mountain, pretty much, and I can't beat that without any boosts. This deck has low synergy. So yep, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.